You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Mish Shedlock, editor of Mish's Global Economic Trend Analysis. Welcome to the show, Mike. A uh, pleasure to be back on. Well, the governor of the European Central Bank thinks he can control somehow this giant slide in the markets. Can he? Well, that's what he, he came out today and tried to do that. It's weird. He, he, he came out. It was a one-hour speech. I, I couldn't stand listening to it all. But uh, I did see some excerpts. So I played the last four minutes in uh, which he promised to uh, get uh, inflation back up to the ECB targets of not quite, but close to 2%. And uh, the markets rallied on uh, that little bit of of news today for a while, and actually the futures were overnight uh, uh, briefly deep into the red. They rallied well into the green, and then they ended up closing sort of flat. But uh, you know, this whole idea that we need inflation to have growth is ridiculous. It was kind of interesting. In his speech, Draghi said, you know, they needed to meet our mandate. So it's a self-imposed mandate and a ridiculous one to produce inflation. He ended his hour-long press conference with, we don't give up. Now, the curious thing is he didn't take any action today. He just promised to take action in March. The, uh, clearly the intent here, he was, he was hoping that he wouldn't have to take action in March, that he could jawbone the markets higher. Well, it, it worked for <laughs> less than half a day. So, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, meanwhile, uh, stocks are, are down, uh, uh, huge on the year now, globally. And uh, oil bounced briefly back above thirty dollars on on Draghi's speech. It couldn't even hold thirty dollars into the close. Well, it's probably not widely known yet, but uh, my correspondent in Tokyo told me yesterday China has just put in another stimulus program, something like twenty twenty five billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Is that money well spent? Well, uh, intervention is never well spent because it doesn't work. Uh, 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 all it does is is create a perception that things are, are fixed, causes brief rallies, you know, some people buy into the nonsense, and but prices are going to go where they're going to go. And and it's it's actually central banks that created this bubble, and now they are arrogant enough to believe that they can step back and, and not let it pop. Well, creating bubbles and not letting them pop are two different things. And, um, you know, we're in the midst of a pretty steep slide this year. We're not in correction territory yet. Stock market's not down 20%. And maybe it doesn't even fall 20% this year. The, uh, uh, probably the worst thing for the central banks is if they manage to rein this in and the stock market just simply goes down 10% a year for four years. Uh, 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 that would destroy pension plans who are counting on 8% returns a year. I think Illinois' pension plans would probably be broke at the end of uh, of, of that time frame if, if, if that's what they did. Uh, but that's what we're talking about here. And and the, the whole sad irony in all of this was, and, and I commented on, on, on my post today, uh, 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 Draghi is the emperor, as a bare-assed emperor with no clothes was the title of my post. The, 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 in this attempt to prevent price deflation, they've created all of these asset bubbles. And when asset bubbles pop, that's the very destructive deflation that's bad for the economy. Why? Because it, it, it impairs banks that can no longer lend. So the, the attempt to prevent, uh, uh, consumer price inflation instead uh, nearly always results in asset bubbles and a very, very kind of destructive deflation. And uh, I think that's what's in store here. Is there anything the average person can do to protect themselves? Get the hell out of the market. 
the, the, uh, certainly the average person is not going to have any influence over, over Fed policy. So uh, that's pretty much out of the question. But, uh, you know, I'm not saying we're going to have a crash because I, I don't know if we're going to have a crash. Now, uh, uh, a, a crash kind of implies to me something that's, that, that's sudden. And as I said, it, you know, this can actually play out in, 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 uh, the market's just slowly drifting lower for years. Or we could have a crash. Maybe we're in the midst of one right now. Uh, uh, n- no one knows yet. A lot of people pretend to know. But, uh, the other thing is, I also think we're heading into a recession. And, uh, uh, you know, that's what all the signs show. And, uh, but no one sees that yet either. You know, the, the Fed is still intent on, in, in insisting th- that that it, it can that it's going to hike four times this year. I, I, I'm not even sure that they're going to hike any more times this year. In Canada, of course, things a little dismal with the oil patch down so much. Twenty percent of the Canadian economy depended on Alberta, which only has eleven percent of the population, but it has most of the oil. Mm-hmm. Is oil going to be an asset for a country that it can no longer count on at least uh, over the next year or two? Oh, oil is an asset. Uh, uh, um, the question is, what's the price on that asset? The, the, it's not going to go to zero. Although I, I, I did see an interesting, uh, 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 humorous re- report on zero hedge the other day, where, where, where certain grades of, of, of sour crude, you know, it costs so much to refine them that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, anyone producing, you know, those really sour grades actually had to pay you know, to have someone take that crude off their hands. So I guess prices can go negative if the quality of the product is bad enough. Uh, 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 but, you know, and perhaps that, that, that applies, I don't know, I haven't looked, to, you know, to, to some of the uh, 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 tar and, and uh, uh, uh you know, Sam's productions. I don't know the quality of, of what comes out of those, but, uh, uh, and certainly the environmental damage, uh, uh, w- w- would, would warrant some of that stuff coming to a halt right now at these prices. But, uh, uh, you know, on the whole, <laughs> you know, uh, oil of sufficient quality is, is, is a, is a, is a positive asset. But it's just not going to be uh, uh, the boom, and, and how how low does it go? I don't know. The uh, look at Iran. Uh, uh, since Obama worked out this deal, the 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 sanctions are off, and um, Iran's going to unleash a flood of oil. You know, heading into a recession, it, it, you know, uh, uh, we're going to have a massive amount of supply coming online. With a dwindling demand for for that, price says it's going to go lower. Now, maybe all of that's priced in, but what if it's not? The bankruptcies in 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 U.S. and job related losses are are mounting. I did a report on my blog. The world has lost uh, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand jobs uh, um, uh, over declining oil production here. And uh, Texas alone has lost something like seventy thousand of them. So uh, you know this is significant. And uh, please recall what all of all of the uh, pundits were, were saying. You know, just a year ago, this decline in oil is quote unambiguously beneficial for the U.S. economy. Well, it turns out it wasn't. Well, of course, you lose a one hundred thousand dollar a year job in the oil patch, and you go to work at Starbucks. I don't think you're going to be going out buying a new house, a new car, a new truck. Um, that's exactly right, and um, already we're, we're we're starting to see uh, uh, indications that that auto sales are are going to be in you know in for a bit of a rough ride here. Uh, certainly, millennials, uh, you know, have have shunned cars in record numbers. They prefer public transportation or something (laughs) incredibly useful like walking. So we'll see. Uh, uh, The the average uh, uh, age at which someone gets a driver's license keeps going up and up. You know, millennials are just, you know, shunning 
having a driver's license. So uh, meanwhile, we've got aging boomers. They're going to be what, driving less, don't you think? So uh, they don't drive at night. And uh, so, uh, again, you know, that's, that's also, you know, putting some pressure here on, on, on oil prices. So uh, we'll see. And, and cars in general, I think within um, a, a time frame of, of five to ten years, I think countless jobs of, 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 of taxi drivers, of, of truck drivers, I think autonomous driving is going to take over. It's going to eliminate the need for a lot of cars, especially in, 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 in city areas. People will be able to, you know, rent cars on, 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 on demand and have them, you know, drive them, drive people wherever they want to go in places of, of tax. I think we're going to lose five million jobs in the U.S. alone. Uh, um, in 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 driving type positions of of buses of of taxis of, of trucks, so uh, you know, and I don't see what jobs are on the horizon, given that we've got a super saturation of of stores like Walmart, and 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 Macy's and Targets. I, you know, how many more of these do we need? So well, in Canada, I, Target went bankrupt. <laughs> Target did go bankrupt in Canada. Eliminated all the stores. Walmart here is 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 uh, 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 closing. Well, I forget the count. Uh, uh, hundreds of stores here, you know, uh, uh, in the U.S. Even as they're going to be opening about two hundred and fifty. Uh, yeah, even even as they're going to be opening up some others, so they're closing bad locations and opening up others. But uh, uh, the net impact of that say is nothing. But you know, contrast with that with last year, where they were adding stores and adding people. You know, at, 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 at a significant rate. Off Shell just announced 10,000 oil apps. So uh, I, I don't think this economy is in good shape. I, I think it's on its last legs if it's not already in recession. Well, I saw a study that said because of uh, online shopping, up to two-thirds of shopping malls may end up closed because people don't want to drive to stores that hardly have any stock on the shelves anymore. They'd rather just order it themselves on the computer and that means all that land the, the shopping malls are on could lose its value. Um, well, two-thirds certainly seems like a bit of hype to me. But, yes, uh, uh, the, the value of, of holding that, of, of that land of the big box retailer, and certainly with rising vacancies, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the value of that land is going to shrink, and, and profit margins are going to shrink because the stores have, to, like it or not, have to compete with Amazon. So, uh, uh, de- declining profits here is, is another reason to, you know, expect a slowdown. You know, if the stores have declining profits and certainly minimum wages have, have, have risen in a number of states, that's going to curtail, uh, 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 uh hiring. So all of this adds up to, to extreme weakness. And, and, and it's not just in the U.S. or Canada. It's, it's global. It just seems to have hit the U.S. last, actually. Well, I, I take a look at what's happened whenever we've had major recessions or depressions. They're usually followed by a world war. Are we setting ourselves up again to start shooting at people? Not uh, that We're not doing that already. Uh, don't know on that one. Certainly tensions are high between uh, China and Japan. Uh, the U.S. warmongers in Congress are saber rattling an economic war with, with with China. Trump is talking about uh, uh, tariffs. Uh, we certainly have uh, lots of potential for wars in in the Middle East. Although I do think that that the best thing Obama has done in eight years is work out this nuclear ag- agreement with Iran. So uh, uh, that's a positive. But in a sense, the war's already started. Uh, uh, this one might not be military. This one might be economic. Every uh, huge numbers of countries, not every country, has, has tried to, you know, manipulate their currency lower. That's what used to be President Mario Draghi tried to did today. Talk the euro down. He doesn't want it to rise anymore. And uh, 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 China is trying to do the same thing. It doesn't. It, 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 it's uh, uh, and and Japan's. You know, currency has fallen hugely. The Canadian, the Australian dollar have both fallen. 
you know, how long will it be before, uh, uh, if the U.S. heads into a recession, before the Fed decides to join the uh, uh, global debate, debasement policy? Now, what about these negative interest rates they're charging in Europe? I think in North America we already have them because of the sky-high fees you have to pay on your bank account. Uh, they'll pay you 1% interest, but they'll take a little more than that in service fees. So you're already paying negative interest rates in effect. But if that ever came to North America, what would the effect be? Uh, I, I don't think that I, I don't think the Fed would be dumb enough to do it. Although maybe I'm wrong because the uh, uh, president of the New York Fed is openly discussing that. So um, the problem with negative interest rates in the U.S., unlike Europe, is the U.S. has a lot of money market funds. The, these funds can only exist if there's, uh, you know, if if they can invest in in treasuries yielding a positive rate. If rates go negative, all these money market funds immediately go bust. Where is that money going to move? I don't know. Maybe uh, for some obscure reason, <laughs> the Fed wants to cause that. But uh, you know, that's the particular problem here for for the U.S. Meanwhile, it hasn't helped anything. Who has it helped? What has it helped in Europe? Uh, uh, you know, supposedly Draghi, you know, did all of these things to spur inflation. Well, if these kinds of things worked, why isn't inflation positive? You know, maybe they ought to stop and think why these things don't work. Or, better yet, maybe they ought to stop and look at the inflation they've caused in asset prices rather than, you know, rather than where they want prices, the inflation to show up, which is in consumer prices. Well, in Canada, where we buy our fresh fruits and vegetables from California, a head of cauliflower now costs us eight bucks. <laughs> well, you obviously you should grow your own. The um, uh, yeah, the, you know that is the and the weird thing about that is, well, I'm I'm assuming Canada does this because almost every other place does it. Is that they say, well, uh, uh. uh Food prices and energy prices aren't part of core inflation. So, are, are, are they counting the cost of that cauliflower in, in 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 Canada with the way you guys measure things or not? I'm not sure. The cauliflower index. <laughs> some some restaurants have been forced to uh, remove tomatoes and cauliflower from their menus because they're just too costly. They said the cost of the cauliflower is more than what I charge for an entire meal, and, and their customers, of course, don't want to pay. You know, seventy percent more for the restaurant meals. I think the restaurant business might be suffering a bit in Canada as well. Is there any bright light at the end of the tunnel here, or is this something that we're just going to have to put up with for a few years? Um, I don't see that there's a bright light because the central banks haven't learned their lesson. They're uh, they're attempting the same failed policies that haven't worked, and they're doing so at progressively lower and lower interest rates. The Fed barely got off of zero here. And um, uh, can they get another hike in? The ECB has got negative rates. It hasn't helped. What happens in another slowdown there? More negative rates? Even more negative rates? The the uh, China is selling treasuries like mad in an attempt to prop up its stabilized uh, 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 want. And uh, China has massive capital outflows here now. Everyone th- thought that China was an economic miracle. Now everyone's, you know, worried, all worried about China and, and actually, except for central banks, uh, uh, who, uh, Bernanke came out the other day and said, well, you know, China doesn't really matter. You know, the problem is the global savings lot. And he, and he said that straight faced, even though China is sitting on, on $28 trillion of debt. Bernanke called that a, quote, local problem, unquote. So uh, 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 here we are talking about savings gluts in in light of of global debt that has risen far beyond where it was in 2000 when we last had our crisis. Well, Canada again uh, is a world leader in one thing: consumer debt. It's not going to be pretty, and I've been talking about that for years, actually. And, um, you know, we'll see. All it's going to take to exasperate that problem is for home prices to start sinking the way they did here in the United States. And I think that's going to happen to Canada. Well, of course, Alberta, with the disaster in the oil patch, real estate prices there are already going down. There's something like over a thousand 
uh, very affordable condos on the market in Edmonton, but nobody's in the mood to buy a, a walk-up $100,000 apartment because they don't have a job. So even though it's cheap, they can't buy it. That's right. What's cheap can always get cheaper, including oil. Uh, whether it does remains to be seen, but uh, uh, certainly I don't foresee any quick turnaround given the global economy appears to be heading towards a recession. With that, Jim, I, I think I've uh, got to leave. Thanks, Mish, for chatting with us. My guest has been Mike Mish Shedlock, editor of Mish's Global Economic Trend Analysis. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.